Hey guys, this is Anastasia Adamfire, and this video is one of my many videos to make up for the full moon dedication that I have been doing uh, this past year. Uh, in May, as many of you know, I kind of took a break from videos. I was doing some personal stuff and just didn't feel right uh, putting videos up. But I did not stop my full moon dedication of creating incense blends and honorings uh, for every full moon uh, for that month. Uh, every full moon has its own sp certain name and it has its own correspondences. And this year I've been called to kind of take my honoring a step further by putting some of my spell crafting into uh, that a bit more. Uh, intuitively and a bit more detailed. So I've been making full moon incense blends and doing honorings every uh, full moon for that specific full moon. I stopped with the flower moon in May and I am now picking it up uh, tonight. I need to get June, July, August, September, October, and November. I have posted December's full moon. Uh, video, but I need to get all of those other months done before January 31st because I, I kept kind of putting my giving myself okay, I'm gonna get it done by New Year by Yule. Okay, that didn't happen. Okay, I'm gonna get it done by New Year's. That didn't happen on January 31st. Um, many of you probably know we have a trifecta of a moon hitting us. We've got it will be not only a full moon, but it will also be a blue moon, as it's the second full moon in January. It will also be a super moon and a blood moon. So, super blood, super blue blood moon on January 31st. And so I am taking that as, hey, all these videos that I've been doing and just not uploading are all these catch-up things that I wanted to do. They need to be done by the 31st. Um, and it seems like that is what it is. So I am trudging forward and starting with the June full moon to get this underway. So without further ado, uh, the June full moon traditionally is known as the strawberry moon. This is because this is kind of the pinnacle of strawberry season. It's when the fruits are kind of all coming out and are able to be harvested and picked. And it's the first kind of, it, it's the first, although the harvest hasn't started yet, obviously, it, it's kind of the first time we're able to reap the benefits and, and abundance that Mother Earth provides us. Um, it's the time of year when Mother Earth kind of bursts forth with, her gifts um and and I think this time of year because she is kind of coming forth with her own abundance we find ourselves kind of in that fruitfulness and it's a time for us to explore our own abundance and prosperity uh, fertility spells are great around this time of year um and I do like the strawberry moon i i think it it connects it resonates i i do feel a kinship with it i actually did find um a name for the june moon of the rose moon and as soon as i read that it clicked for me so while strawberry moon makes sense it really it, it does resonate the rose moon resonates even more as a name and this isn't a name that I see everywhere so it kind of makes it a bit more endearing for my own personal uh, path why is it that the rose moon resonates for me um, I'm kind of finding uh, the further I go on my path especially when it comes down to full moon connections if it there is a full moon in the same month as a Sabbath I find a lot of, and, and it makes perfect sense, there's a lot of connections between the full moon correspondences and the Sabbath kind of coming up because 
the Sabbath marks that time of year. Well, every full moon has its own connection to that specific time of year. So it would make sense that they kind of jive together and mesh together really well. Um, early on in my path, I read that for midsummer or litha or summer solstice, which does happen in June, um, Rose is the goddess scent uh, to honor the summer solstice. It is the the scent and the flower that um, a lot of people attribute to the goddess at this time of of the year. Um, and I really dug that. I, I like that because especially since Midsummer for me is is such a, a God based uh, Sabbath for me personally. Again, you might not agree with that. It might connect to you very much in a goddess way. And I still do connect to the goddess um, in that moment. That's kind of her, her turn into motherhood or she's about to become a mother. She's very pregnant at this point. Um, and, and it is representative of that, again, that mother earth starting to burst forth with the harvest. It, it's the Sabbath right before Lunasa, which is the first harvest. Um, and so I get that there is a goddess connection, but for me, on my personal path, Kernunos is just such an energy for me at that time that it really masks so much. Or not masks so much, but it, it takes prominence. It, it takes precedence, I, I think, for me personally. So when I read that the rose are rose is the goddess goddess's sacred scent for the summer solstice, it hit me and it stuck with me. And any time um, since reading that on some website, I, I it might I didn't write down what website it was. It just stuck with me and I think when something truly resonates within you and it's like I don't know where I heard this I don't know where I read this I don't know where I saw this but it is just in my brain and I can't let go of it that for me is when it's like okay this is something for me this is definitely something that I am supposed to hang on to for one reason or another and in hindsight, because this was something I read before Hell came to me, before certainly before Aphrodite came to me, but now Aphrodite and Hell, uh, two goddesses that I work with, both the rose is sacred to them. It, it's their sacred flower, or one of them. And I think that's kind of cool. Um, so when I read that the June moon also, by some, is called the rose moon, I jumped on that that just again kind of stuck with me um I like the duality of it I like that just on the Sabbath when I am honoring the goddess by lighting my incense my rose incense uh that's what I was I, I think I might have gone on a tangent every midsummer I light my rose incense as well as whatever incense I feel called to burn for the God. I make sure that on my altar I have a rose as well as, you know, my oak leaves and my um, horns because that's always a thing. Um, the rose is very important to me for midsummer. And so I like that duality. I like that while on the Sabbath, the rose is such a prominent figure also on the full moon the rose is still there and it's kind of that connection um it gives midsummer a bit more balance for me uh because it is such a day of sun 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 and light and light and light but for me it's also kind of that acknowledgement that quickly it's going to be about the dark it's going to be a very different thing and and having that rose and connecting it to the full moon for that month brings that darkness um into that sabbath a bit more and while yes we're celebrating the light and we're giving honor to the light we also have that bit of nugget of truth that the darkness is coming and it's not something to be feared but it is something to acknowledge um
the rose for me is also, um, I, I believe this is pretty traditional as well. The rose is all about divine connection, uh, spiritual love. It's easy, I think, to say, oh, rose is all about love. Well, yeah, but it goes so much further. It is such a universal symbol of love that I think it kind of transcends the word. It, it, it is such an emotion and such a connection that there, there almost is no way to describe the connection that the symbol of the rose has to love. And it's much more than just that lusty love. I mean, certainly it can go that route as well. But for me, at least, if given a rose, that's something that is so much more endearing. It is so much more connected. It is so much more a part of you. Um, it, it's just, it's more. It, it's this divine and spiritual love that goes so much beyond, you know, do you like me, check yes or no type of, <laughs> type of a thing. Um, it also is a symbol of strength, uh, courage, beauty, and happiness. Um, I really dig that, actually. I like that uh, symbol that is so iconic uh, and iconically feminine, and, and it truly is. I mean, it's, it, it's such a, 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 it's such a feminine flower. It, it's so beautiful. It's so uh, soft and sumptuous and, and velvety and all these wonderful romantic words. But in the same breath, you know, it's got these thorns. It, it is prickly. It is not something that you can easily obtain in a way. You have to have a bit of courage to, to pick up a rose. You have to have a bit of strength to endure it. And, and I think it goes back to the kind of love that, for me at least, it represents. It's not the warm and fuzzy, sweet oh gosh, I like you too, type of a thing. It's so much more. It's not only the beautiful, but it is the ugly. It is not only the sweet, but it is also the nasty. It is, you know, dude, you are going to see me in so many different ways and you are not going to like all of those ways, but let's stick this out. Let's get through this. It's the way I feel, especially with my patron and my matron, um, that's the energy is when I am working with them, it's not always, you know, butterflies and rainbows. There's a lot of times it's, dude, this freaking sucks. I don't want to do this. And it's like, shut up, put on your big girl pants and gut it out because this is the work you have to do. And especially with hell, it makes perfect sense to me that a rose is a connection to hell. Um, some people... Um, will say even when they when she's around them they can smell dried roses um, and and roses ascent I definitely attribute to her as well but that is the rose connection for me it's that hey once we get through this ickiness yes it's going to be so much more beautiful and you're going to have earned it because you're going to have gotten through these thorns. You're going through this briar at this point, And it sucks and it's hard. But sweetie, once you get past all this crap, it's going to be so awesome and so beautiful and so meaningful. You will have attained something. That, in a nutshell, is what a rose means to me. So, that is why, although Strawberry Moon is it is a great connection for me. Rose connects a bit more for the June moon. Um, I have been burning my mix while um, yammering. So I'm just going to give a brief rundown. Uh, for my lunar mix, uh, the items that I went with were gardenia oil, uh, rose petals, as well as rose oil, uh, violets, um, lotus, blessed thistle, 
apple blossom, cherry blossom, catnip, and sandalwood. Um, the, the rose petals, pretty basic. Uh, gardenia is a huge connection to the moon. Every lunar incense I make has gardenia oil in it. Um, violets I really like because it connects you to that nighttime magic. It connects you to that darkness. Uh, it's great for creativity and imagination. They are great for soothing. Um, for me, they are very much a, a flower that I turn to for calming and soothing grief. If you've gone through a real shit time, violets are for me my way of, of just saying, dude, I'm so sorry and I'll help you get through this. Uh, Lotus uh, for mercy, for compassion. Um, kind of bringing us into a bit of that um, motherly goddess. Uh, feel. Uh, Blessed Thistle, uh, again, again, kind of that motherly mercy, compassion, but also very healing. I, I like uh, Blessed Thistle for that purpose. Uh, it also connects to happiness, I believe, and love. Uh, Apple Blossom. Apple Blossom, for me, still has connection to the ancestors, but it's a bit more of the lighter side of it. it it's not so much a drag down to the underworld um, as an honoring of the underworld. It, it's kind of what we do in the physical realm to remember the beauty. It, it's kind of like how lilac for me, or lilac, sorry. Uh, lilac for me is all about the beautiful memories because it does connect to memory. Um, apple blossom is kind of the good memories that I have with the ancestors. Um, it's, it's kind of got that spring and summer feel to it. Uh, cherry blossom, love, lust, happiness. Yeah, it's in there. Um, good summertime feelings. Um, catnip, happiness. Um, sacred for, uh, feline, uh, deities and goddesses, um, and Beset, I believe, and Sekhmet are both um, Egyptian solar goddesses. So since Midsummer is so much about the sun, I, I thought, well, this is the moon during that that time of the year. So let's put a little catnip to appease them and to connect to them a bit as well. Um, and then Sandalwood uh, always spiritual connection, meditation, making you go to that inner realm a bit, um, digging in a little deeper, um, remembering that water connection, uh, even in the month of sun. Uh, then for the specific rose moon connection, I chose honeysuckle for success, abundance, warmth, uh, sweetness, uh, Success and abundance are traditional warmth. Honeysuckle is such a warm thing. It smells when it burns. It smells amazing. Uh, sweetness, it adds a little sweetness to life. If, if you ever take a honeysuckle off the vine and bite the tip off of it, you can suck through the honey. And I remember doing that as a kid. And it's just, it, it again, kind of like the lilac uh, connection to my childhood. It makes me remember really good time so it connects to that sweet um, and kind of innocent phase really. Um, honeysuckle also I wanted to use during this time because again it is a connector to uh, midsummer for me. Uh, bees, honey, all that jazz, huge huge connections during for Letha uh, so I wanted to kind of have that connection both in the lunar incense for this time of year but also in the solar. Uh, lavender I chose for peace, happiness, tranquility, love, relaxation. Um, this is time the time of year to kind of breathe, enjoy the fruits of your labors a bit, 
we're starting, you know, we're, the next phase is the harvest. And while the harvest is, yes, about abundance and prosperity and yay, look at all these awesome things we have to get ready for the dark of the year. We still have to work to reap all of those things. Uh, for me, June and July are kind of about, okay, let, let's get this manifestation going, but let's enjoy a bit of the manifestation early on. The things that, you know, are here for us, provided for us, the, the things we've set in motion with Imbolc and Ostara and all of those seedlings we've planted along the way. Now we can kind of start to enjoy them, but it's a bit more of a relaxed feeling. It's not so much work, 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 because Dark of the Year is right on our heels, dude, and we need to get through all this crap. It's okay. We set things in motion in spring. It's now summer. Let's enjoy it a little bit. So I, I like lavender for that feeling because it reminds me to you know, stop and smell the roses a bit, I guess, because it gives me that, that bit of relaxation and, and peace that I need. Um, then I added ginger. Uh, for a little bit of love, uh, some lust energy, um, also heightened energy. It helps when added to mixtures, it helps to speed up the other agents um, in said spell. So I like that. Uh, ginger for me it is a bit of that lusty Cernunos and Aphrodite energy. It's a bit of that other side of things. Whereas the rose is all about, you know, this deep, endearing, committed love um, that goes to a completely different plane. Um, ginger kind of brings it back to earth and is, is a bit more grounded and real with, hey, let, let's get this fire going, dude. So I kind of like that energy as well uh, during this time of year. And... Certainly, I, I think when we're honoring the goddess, we are honoring all aspects of her. So yes, definitely honoring that that connection, that dedication, that spiritual, otherrealmly kind of force. But let's also remember, she is something to be desired. She is, you know, bursting forth at this point in... You know, Beltane, I know, is kind of the time to really hone in on that. But for me, Midsummer is still, the fires are still burning. So I wanted to add a little bit of fire element in there. Um, and then I ended it with patchouli uh, for fertility. I love protection and prosperity. Uh, patchouli definitely connects to the earth. I wanted the earth mother to be represented here. Uh, definitely one of those things where... If Mother Earth is providing us with with what we need, I, I want to include that in this blend. Um, and, and another thing, when we're talking about fertility, I think oftentimes it's thought of as, you know, that sexual impregnate me baby type of a deal. But fertility is also very much about creativity. It, it's about... Uh, fertility of the home, fertility of communication, fertility of the wallet sometimes. If you add an element for fertility and you're like, dude, I don't want to get pregnant though, but maybe, hey, I am, you know, a writer and I'm hitting this writer's block and I don't know what to do. Patchouli is amazing for that, um, I believe. Uh, my friend Elizabeth Crystal Hawk works with Caridwin and Caridwin is all about inspiration and creativity. Well, one of her aspects is all about creativity and inspiration and patchouli is one of her sacred, um, her sacred herbs. And I, I think for me that has become a real personal connection as well. It, it, even though traditionally you don't find it connected to creativity because of that fertility that it, um, symbolizes and um, it has become a, a bit more of a creative uh, stimulant for me at least but it is also about prosperity and abundance so why not look at the fertility in that way um, 
yeah, just just something to remember, I guess, whenever we're crafting is it's great to look at the traditional correspondences, but even if you're looking at a traditional correspondence, you can always flip it on its ear and make it into something that is tailor fit for you. So yeah, that was my Rose Moon uh, connection uh, video, what have you. Um, I may have talked about it in real time, but yes, I am sitting here in January, uh, very, very far away from June, but um, I was trying to, I was looking over my notes from when I made this incense. So um, I'm sorry if I used past or present tense and it got confusing. I just was trying to uh, convey as much as I could um, from when I created this blend. So yeah, I hope that makes sense. I hope everyone's having a great January. Um, here in Minnesota, it's really, really cold. So it's kind of cool to revisit my notes from June when we're talking about sun and warmth and um, all that green and abundance. Um, yeah, have a great night. Bye guys, blessed be as always.